thank the IIBA Chennai chapter uh, and Hyderabad chapter for giving this opportunity to me to host this webinar on such an important and interesting topic, business analyst as a catalyst for innovation. And my special thanks for, uh, uh, for Kanan. Uh, he has been instrumental in uh, building this uh, Chennai chapter, uh, providing all the opportunities for the audience to, uh, to uh, really suggest uh, topics like this and coordinating with the speakers uh, to ensure that we have high quality discussions. So all thanks to Kanan for making this chapter successful and helping the, uh, the BA community. So let's get started. Uh, business analyst as a catalyst for innovation. And uh, uh, we will have enough time for uh, questions and answers. Uh, so you have multiple ways of uh, asking the questions you can write in your chat window and i will ask uh, i will answer those questions uh, at the end of the webinar uh, you can also raise your hand so that i can see uh, if you have any question uh, and if it is really really important i will uh, uh, i will uh, really interrupt uh, or i will take a pause and answer that question and uh, then we will move forward. So Chinmay, I see your uh, hand is uh, uh, raised. Uh, Sebastian, your hand is also raised. Srinivas, your hand is raised. Uh, Tiagarajan uh, and Vijay. Uh, so if you have a question, I will request you to, uh, to uh, write that on a chat window. If you don't have a question and it is just by mistake that your hand is uh, raised, uh, please uh, you know lower your, your hand. Great, great. So there is no question uh, till now and i don't see any more hands now so great thank you so much uh, and let's get started uh, so business analysis and innovation uh, let us start with that actually business analysis and innovation uh, we don't have to inno innovate yet we as business analysts do right business analyst uh, it is not really expected us to innovate but uh, in real life we do a lot of innovation all right innovation uh, contributes to effective business analysis innovation is all about identifying various solution approaches uh, towards a solution and uh, recommending the best one so innovation is always uh, contributing to effective business analysis we think outside the box uh, critical thinking and problem solving is one of the key skills that business analysts need to have so therefore innovation actually contributes uh, to uh, being a good business analyst and doing an effective business analysis uh, same thing is about uh, business analysis contributing to innovation. Business analysis is all about, you know, um, task and techniques uh, that will help organizations uh, that, that will help business analysts find the solutions that that solve the uh, problems and enable the organization achieve the objective. All right. So business analysis has a lot of tasks and techniques uh, that will uh, contribute to innovation. Uh, some of those techniques are critical thinking, uh, problem solving, uh, uh, facilitation, brainstorming. So all those techniques, actually, uh, if we have those mature practices, they help innovation. Uh, so innovation contributes to being a business, good business analyst and a business analyst contributes to the innovation. And therefore, if that is so, what I would like to introduce in this talk, a, uh, a concept called systematic innovation management, SIM. Okay, uh, systematic innovation management, because if we have to do innovation as business analyst, uh, then we better do it systematically, right? Uh, so we will cover uh, what is an innovation? Uh, what is innovation? How is it different from being creative? Right. So we will cover uh, what is innovation and then we will also touch upon what is systematic about it. How can we go through a process and create the innovation? Actually, how can we processize the innovation? And the third aspect is management of this innovation. There are a lot of components outside our environment surrounding uh, that we have to the business. Those components change. So how can we actually manage our, in our innovation process? Uh, you know, take into consideration those changes that are occurring in the environment and deliver that value to our stakeholders, deliver to the value to our uh, organizations. So we are going to cover this concept of SIM uh, through this uh, presentation. And statistics say again and again, and I just had a look at uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, surveys. 
uh, and as recently as last year and year before and some of the surveys that were about five years back uh, 2010 when ibm did a global study of ceos where about 1400 ceos were interviewed uh, so so that study i had taken and i had taken also the recent studies uh, from multiple sources like bcg has done a uh, global top 50 most innovative companies accenture has done why low risk innovation is costly uh, price waterhouse cooper has done a 17th uh, annual global ceo survey in 2014 uh, so taking that data and statistics actually say again and again 70 to 90 percent of the executives uh, agree that innovation is amongst the top three critical factors for the success of their business you know so based on which survey you take uh, you know the range is between 70 to 90 percent so these executives these ceos agree that innovation is the critical factor for the success of their organization they also have uh, said that complexity is their biggest challenge you know and creativity is the most important leadership quality that they are looking into right so these three were the key findings in this uh, in these surveys yet only 20 to 30 percent of the companies make serious commitments towards systematic innovation management uh, means there is a desire for doing that innovation and there are, are resources that are allocated to innovation and innovation happens as part of a planned strategy it is a planned program for the organization where the where the innovation happens and only 20 to 30 percent of the companies made serious commitment about it uh, only 17 percent of the corporates are able to grow consistently uh, this is another survey by pwc uh, that survey was fit for growth index you know uh, and they found only 70 per 17 percent of the corporates are able to grow consistently they are fit to grow and you see this one and 20 to 30 percent companies actually making that serious commitment somewhat there is a correlation over there so so innovation is so critical and i think why the uh, organizations find it difficult to commit uh, significant resources in the innovation because innovation has an inherent risk the executives don't know whether this is going to pay or not right innovation is not like a, developing a software where you have uh, you have steps and you follow those steps and innovation will happen so let's see how can we make this process of innovation a systematic process and that's what this talk all about how do we manage and how do we manage that as a project and deliver that innovation predictably right so first let us understand few concepts what is the difference between creativity and innovation right creativity is an act of coming up with ideas right so you come up with the idea that is the creativity okay and when you implement this idea that is an innovation uh, to carry out the entire process from defining the problem to successful implementation of innovations in practice that is innovation when you when you implement that creativity that becomes an innovation right uh, creativity is all about uh, divergent thinking you are thinking a lot of possibilities a lot of ideas it is all about divergent thinking however innovation is all about convergent you are then zeroing down on one particular idea and you are implementing that idea that is innovation innovation is always about the result right <clears throat> So let's see the type of innovations uh, and there are two dimensions that i have taken over here uh, the first dimension is the market orientation what is the relevant of relevance of this this innovation towards the market towards the business and the second dimension is the technology technology content technology relevance you know um, of of this innovation right so i have taken two of them there is a third dimension which is about the time dimension you know is it relevant today or is it relevant after five years after two years after 10 years so is it a futuristic innovation or is it relevant today right so this is the third dimension which i am uh, purposely not uh, discussing over here but i will bring that uh, later on so if you see these two dimensions the market orientation and technology content right uh, if the market orientation is 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 uh, is is low 
and also the technology content is low that is an incremental innovation you know uh, someone asked actually the uh, the ceo of uh, toyota uh, what is the innovation that your organization has done in past 30 years and they say, he said that you know we don't have uh, uh, you know superbly genius people in our organization however every day they think of something new and they actually improve what they are doing and if you add this 35 years of of improvement that actually has changed toyota completely the suggestions per employee per year has gone from 0.01 per employee to 48 every year you know so that is the incremental innovation uh, you know this is the incremental uh, improvement that you make in whatever being done so incremental innovation has a lot of relevance um, you know low technology content low market orientation but you make something um, something work right um, if the technology content is high but the market orientation is low means it is in terms of the futuristic uh, innovation that is a break breakthrough innovation very high technology content uh, however the uh, the the uh, the market orientation is less for example i worked for bell labs and bell labs did innovation of 4g in late 90s okay that time actually the market orientation of that innovation was very poor we were still actually uh, you know going in the mobile space and our objective was that people should be able to talk you know uh, even the data was not that high uh, on the on the mobile devices in 90s and that was a breakthrough innovation um, you know and then you have those type of innovations where the market orientation is very high however technology differentiation is very low you know everyone could have that uh, technology right that is disruptive uh, innovation for example um, ola caps they have come up with these uh, mobile apps and therefore you can uh, you can book the taxi from anywhere the message goes to those cabs uh, who are nearby they can pick those cabs you know very clearly how long it is going to take for you to receive that cab you can also track the cab actually where is that cab currently you know so they did not develop a they, they did not develop a innovative technology per se they used whatever technology was available they used that that as a uh, that as a platform to create uh, some processes and uh, and a product that help users uh, you know use their services very effectively which are taxis so very high market orientation but low technology content but disruptive right they really uh, virtually bite off uh, you know meru caps right so this is a disruptive uh, innovation and there those innovations where the market orientation is very high means they have relevance today and also the technology content is very high those are the game changers you know so very high market orientation very high technology content uh, those are the game changers because high technology content means people cannot come near they will take time to develop the technology that is the game changer and that game changer if i can give any example it was an apple actually when they launched their um, their their mobile phone you know there was a high market orientation people needed that today and uh, you know that that definitely actually distinguishes them from the rest of the competition and that was a game changer right uh, so so these are the four quadrants four type of innovations uh, that we are talking about so let's see what is the relevant and how can relevance and how can we make these innovations more uh, you know value driven innovation so so as i gave the example toyota is here bell labs uh, in 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 there and dell for example dell has not invented any product however they have completely actually uh, changed the supply chain management you know so they did lot of those changes in supply chain management which actually were innovative and that makes them what they are today right uh, game changer if i can you know i can relate to my first organization c dot Uh, you know which developed the telecom technologies for indian market and that time the uh, uh, you know this technology not only survives in indian conditions of 
high dust high temperature um, uh, you know power is not available in many places the 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 trained men power is not there to maintain these kind of switches so very very uh, you know rugged switches easy to maintain and also changed that marketplace completely actually that drove the cost down to 10% of what uh, the, the the competition offering that time right uh, so these are some of the examples of that and it is not that systematic innovation is not happening so let me also give you some example of systematic innovation especially in 20th century uh, so for example in 20th century the first systematic innovation is started with productivity improvement how can we improve the productivity of our manufacturing system which is started as early as uh, 1910 about 100 years back uh, with scientific management and this came from taylor in 1920 uh, mass production which was deployed by ford uh, which is again 95 years back toyota pro production system 1950 and lean 1990 you know so a lot of systematic innovation happened which was related to productivity improvement in 90s from early 90s till late, late 90s a lot of systematic uh, following a process following a methodology there was uh, uh, an innovation that was possible predictably actually people innovated predictably they increased the productivity also you know uh, uh, later part of uh, 90s actually we saw a lot of focus on quality so there is a lot of quality related improvement that happened systematic quality systematic innovation on quality front which is started with uh, spc uh, statistical process control in uh, 1924 uh, then total quality control total quality management and six sigma you know so a lot of uh, innovation uh, you know significant innovation uh, on the quality front which happened again in uh, in in 20th century so what is going to happen in 21st century what is that systematic innovation that we are talking today um, you know uh, that productivity is important but the meaning of productivity has changed in today's environment similarly quality is important um, uh, however the meaning of quality is different now right so what is that innovation in 20 21st century so let us see a little bit about it but before we go to that innovation so we need to understand what is the market in in 21st century that will give us an idea what type of innovation do we need in 21st century okay um, so the challenges in 21st century are multifold the first challenge is which is which is you know opposed is by the interconnected world the it and internet has completely changed the way we work the social media is actually changing the consumer behavior uh, you know we are working in an integrated economy uh, you know there are no cross geographical boundaries and hence uh, there is a huge cross geographical risk you have seen actually china did something and all the markets are getting impacted today right information is available in real time communication barriers are disappearing uh, business processes are in the hand of end consumers uh, so for example we all operate a bank you know and therefore if bank does not innovate their processes they will find that their customers are going to other banks who have more user friendly processes right so process innovation in these banks process re-engineering in this environment becomes actually the necessity for the businesses to survive uh, internet of thing you know so a lot of those uh, things are impacting uh, the businesses the markets and industries are hyper competitive today this globalization has changed that entire scenario barrier of entry uh, they are smaller much lesser now actually increase in disruptive and breakthrough innovation that is happening product innovation alone is not sufficient you need to think of the processes you need to think of the business model you need to think about the you know systems oriented solutions right so hyper competitive in uh, industry and therefore you need to think of multiple things the market is turbulent and dynamic uh, you know influence of internet social media digital devices is increasing uh, very fast fast moving uncertain markets with new entrants that are coming and new solutions and offering that are that are coming the technology is fast and disruptive fast and furious 
right? And everyone has access to that uh, technology. So the market is very turbulent. Your competitive advantage is always at risk because you don't know who is going to be born tomorrow and who will come with an idea and execute that idea. So therefore, your core competence and your, um, you know, your core competence is always at risk. Uh, the changes are fast paced, uh, you know, increased pace of idea to market, right? Uh, the time to market that world has changed to idea to market, right? Shorter product life cycles. That's what is expected today, right? So this has achieved. This is the this is the character of the industry, character of the business that we operate in. And as if this was not enough, we have demanding customers, you know, because customers have lot of information. What is happening around the globe? And they are demanding those features. They are going to those organizations who have product services and business models that support the desire of the customers. And also, actually, the stakeholders are demanding because in this turbulent market, actually, it is very important for organizations to 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 focus on wealth creation, focus on value creation for the stakeholders. So the stakeholders are demanding the valuation is becoming more important and people don't have actually patience, right? So this is the characteristics of today's environment. As a result, actually, complexity is everywhere. Business world is evolving. Cost need to be reduced. Technology advantages, um, advancement. They're fast and furious. Internet is everywhere in everything. Every company is a technology company, right? I had never thought 20 years back that a, a cab company will be as technology savvy as Ola, right? New business models emerging. Uh, the convergence of digital, mobile, social, cloud, all that is happening. And ultimately, there is a theme. Do more with less and do it faster. So complexity is increasing multiple fold. And therefore, those organizations who can leverage this complexity will be hugely successful. And that requires problem analysis, opportunity analysis, search for alternative, experimentation, business requirements, solution assessment, feasibility analysis, business case, benefit analysis. And also this complexity need to be managed. So project managers are uh, project management is not project management anymore. It has become actually managing the complexity. Our project managers need to be skilled, need to be trained in managing this complexity because it is all about planning, execution, monitoring, prioritization, risk and dependency management, which changes virtually every day, team management, conflict management, and ultimately delivering predictably. That's what is needed. And if you look at the left hand side of your screen, this is all about innovation through strategic business analysis. You're, you need to innovate. And the right hand side is managing the complexity, managing those complex projects. OK, so that's what is the innovation that we are looking today that will give the value to stakeholders and the uh, organizations. So what does it mean for BAs? Uh, it means that business analysts need to increasingly focus on a strategy and innovation rather than just requirement gathering and documentation and project execution. The key skills will be critical thinking, ability to adapt, invent, reinvent, create and innovate. You know, business analysts therefore can be catalyst for this innovation. OK, so we will cover those things actually. So let's see what is the meaning of innovation uh, in today's world. OK, and this is uh, uh, <clears throat> so innovation is a system that delivers new ideas as unique solutions for customers and consumers in such a way that the company will generate brand recognition in the market and increase the wealth for employees and stakeholders. That is the definition of innovation in today's world. It has to be tangible. It has to be now. It has to be relevant for our customers and consumers. Right. It has to be relevant for our stakeholders uh, that they get value. It has to be relevant for our organization where it enhances the brand value of the organization. So the market relevance is really huge where the new ideas may require sustainable, disruptive or breakthrough innovation. Breakthrough innovation efforts to deliver new improved profit models, networks, structures, processes, products, services, channels, brand or customer engagement. So a lot of those things need to be delivered at the same time. Many of those things need to be delivered uh, at the same time 
to really enhance the value of our organization right so innovation is not just about brainstorming it is not just about creativity lot more actually need to think of innovative business models need to think of innovative products innovative services innovative processes innovative culture and passionate pursuit of innovation because this is now a continuous process this is like a project right when you do a project you create a new product and that product need to be maintained same way the innovation need to happen and this innovation need to be maintained you need to have new features on this innovation so therefore you require passionate pursuit of innovation embrace the failure and reward innovation our organizations need to change our hr mindset need to change we need to actually build reward around the innovation with our uh, uh, with with our comp and ben right uh, so that is very important so to deliver the better business outcome predictably we need to manage innovation systematically okay so i'm going to focus now on how do you systematically manage this innovation and deliver the innovation okay so that's the next uh, section <clears throat> so i am now going to introduce that framework that i talked about systematic innovation management sim and the theme here is that innovation management system should be repeatable should be predictable should be consistent means deliver the same output all the time should be sustainable right means it has to be embedded in procedure procedures and values you know uh, it has to be scalable it has to be risk tolerant you know uh, and it has to be profitable so sim is all about value driven innovation so today actually value is very important right so systematic value creation is the theme today and that is started somewhere in mid uh, 1950s when a triage uh, methodology came which was focusing on data data analysis and uh, using the data for solving the problem and then 70s uh, uh, you know porter and others they came with that strategic thinking and planning um, uh, and strategic thinking which was also then developed in 90s by gary hamel uh, you know and 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 others so the next step is that we leverage on this and we create the value driven innovation processes value driven innovation so let's see how can we do that actually so i would like to uh, to to present to you a framework uh, a six step framework um, for systematic innovation management you know so these are the six steps elicitation first we need to understand what is the need ignite and spark a team uh, prepare the environment for innovation analyze and select the idea prepare a convincing business case and launch implement manage the change right so these are the six steps and i'll take uh, these steps uh, you know present to you so first one is elicitation D discover the need for value driven innovation and you know those of you who are business analyst when you read this word elicitation right this is all about business analysis so really we could be we we can play a powerful catalyst role in whatever i'm going to discuss now right so elicitation elicitation we means that we need to look for many things we need to look problem as a source of ideas do you see the problems and that can give you some ideas for innovation a uh, perception of market opportunities you perceive that there are some opportunities over there detection of competition weakness you have so many organization detect the weakness actually detection of tele technology opportunities a spin off someone has done something actually and you can leverage the same idea and do something building on your own hobbies knowledge skills right waste is a source of opportunities if you see there is a waste a source of opportunity so as a business analyst actually we need to also look for latest trends and see that uh, they give you a source of uh, idea so we need to look for a lot more things um, uh, you know and start our elicitation with this rather than jumping and going to the stakeholders and discussing we need to be continuously looking for the opportunities for value driven innovation and we need to understand our stakeholders again all the all of you who are business analysts know the stakeholders the importance of the stakeholders so we need to understand the context around this innovation what are we doing are we trying to solve a problem or there is an opportunity that we are taking advantage of 
you know what is needed do you need to develop this slowly or swiftly you know uh, how this will be done uh, individually or in a group uh, what kind of stakeholders and people that you have do you have experts or you have generalist is it an incremental or breakthrough innovation uh, the what is the context is it present or future right so we need to actually understand the context and <clears throat> we need to then have the divergent thinking you know generate ideas right uh, so use those techniques like brainstorming possibility <coughs> sorry expand options you know move away from those creative colors and here again we will be actually that catalyst of innovation right so move away from those creativity colors which uh, you know will come like we have already done that all the time that ways uh, we don't have luxury of trying something new. This is our usual approach, right? Instead of uh, that, actually, we need to try something like instead of instead of expensive commercials on TV. What if we put a video on YouTube, right? So generate ideas, divergent thinking, use a different perspective to analyze the problem or the opportunity. Use that six thinking hat, you know, well-known uh, framework, you know, and then question you know ask questions okay uh, and ask why why not what if what could what might if something happens then what about the other thing right but avoid questions that kill that creativity like have you ever thought about it right uh, create association observation experimentation networking right so do all the, all those kind of things before you really jump into um, uh, into more in depth elicitation and the next one is then you need to ignite your team you know create a spark right uh, so business analyst again be catalyst and creating that creative thinking in others those of you who have read webo will uh, will remember this uh, the definition of the creative uh, thinking and problem solving um, you know uh, in encourage the creative thinking in others you know gather people of diverse background wrong answer technique sometimes you give the wrong answer and uh, see if uh, you know people are thinking uh, that way right wrong answer technique will be that we want to book a cab so you know we have all of us have mobile phone with us so we will actually sms our requirement to a predefined number right of course this is a irrelevant technique today we have moved for, for, forward so people will come up with ideas that no 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 something more can be done you know maybe you can start with a phone call right so wrong answer also the hummingway method hummingway was um, an american author who used to write a first few sentences of his next chapter before he completes the previous chapter so when he used to write that next chapter few things you know that used to give him the context how he will build the story in the previous chapter right so you can have that actually think uh, of a step ahead you know when you are developing a new business model think of your customers think how you you will deliver that service to those customers provocation techniques you can provoke uh, the people right uh, we will not have the uh, spare wheel in our car from tomorrow you know uh, from from the next version so what can we do if someone's car tire is flat we will not have the spare wheel so provoke them to think about innovative ideas so that car can still run with uh, a flat tire uh, substitution techniques you substitute something and then uh, see the ideas actually substitute your market segment and see uh, the idea you are developing a new mobile phone and you are actually uh, innovating what kind of device will work for people so you have been uh, having an idea of uh, of uh, let's say the corporate world substitute that to the teenagers what do we, what do they need substitute this to those people who are old people substitute to housewives so you can have substitution techniques worst idea techniques you know what can uh, give us the worst worst uh, supplier of a product what will give that award you know so the worst idea technique can uh, give us and there are eight commandment uh, that we need to be uh, that we need to take care uh, you know about the ideas and don't judge you know don't be judgmental 
whatever people are uh, saying take that as it is don't make a judgment whether this idea is good or bad no criticism no edit write the idea as it is uh, spellings don't mistake uh, spellings don't count you know don't think of execution first our objective is to get the ideas you know uh, so don't think of the execution execution will come later idea selection will be later don't worry about uh, many constraints that you will have don't look backward don't lose focus and keep high energy level right so we can really play a catalyst role uh, in these uh, ideation stages and the next step is a preparation you know uh, the key themes of the preparation is avoid costly mistakes of flawed ideas and measurement you know fail early increase the ability to deal with ambiguity and uncertainty learn how to adapt more quickly and proactively to changes in the marketplace because changes in the marketplace will happen apply value value driven creativity to specific business problems and collaborate with the, with your stakeholders so prepare for all these things actually what are the things that you need uh, to deal with uh, these five points and create that environment for creativity you know uh, so create that culture first one is fuel passion okay develop a sense of urgency develop a sense of purpose promote collaboration have fun you know celebrate ideas when a new idea comes actually celebrate those ideas publicize that idea recognize that idea encourage that idea provide that autonomy that people can create those ideas okay uh, foster the courage encourage risk taking fail quickly and fail early think small open culture maximize the diversity so a lot of those things need to be done uh, for for preparing that environment for that creativity and creating that environment for the innovation and then comes the analysis analysis is all about convergent thinking once we have completed the divergent thinking we have the ideas then we need to converge which idea do we take for implementation right so convergent thinking is all about analysis which is all about measurement prioritize prioritizing those ideas narrowing the options and for that you as business analyst again have a lot of techniques like five wise scatter diagram Pareto charts mind map fishbone diagram process diagram interrelation interrelationship diagrams so you have a lot of uh, those techniques that you have used and then select an idea you know so you have the decision analysis technique uh, various techniques for decision analysis weighted ranking voting feasibility analysis and select that idea using that so a lot of analysis over here and then for your idea develop a convincing business case run your innovation like a business right uh, so use that sari model watermark has the sari model Valicate uh, uses the sari model as an exclusive partner of watermark learning which stands for situation analysis recommendation implementation and evaluation you know so develop your solid bulletproof business case and then package your business case uh, for presentation to different stakeholders so packaging is important presentation of your business case is important create that overview history objective deliverables target orient timeline clients budget implementation plan and benefit evaluation plan how will you evaluate the benefit of this uh, innovation right so package your business case and then launch and implement which means manage that change right uh, and that change managing that change is very very important i like this quote everyone wants to grow most people are just unwilling to change in order to do so okay change is hard because people overestimate the value of what they have and underestimate the value of what they may gain by giving up what they have today right so we need to manage this change because innovation is all about your idea seeing that light of the day so we need to understand what we what people are afraid of and therefore what we can do and how do we manage that change so there are many things one is clarity motivates need to be transparent right transparency motivates positive thoughts motivate enjoyment motivates feeling important motivates success motivates personal benefit motivates so let's see how iiba actually support all this right um, and iiba bebop 3.0 which was released in april this year has a new 
punch line called controlled transformation of an organization yeah uh, controlled transformation of an organization uh, and they support this controlled organized transformation of the organization through generally accepted practices in the business analysis so whatever we talked about iiba supports that and this is the definition of new business analysis in version 3.0 business analysis is a practice of enabling change in an enterprise by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to a stakeholder business analysis enables an enterprise to articulate needs and rationale for change and to design and describe the solutions that can deliver value see if you read this definition there are a lot of words which are meaning the systematic innovation right so iiba is changing uh, you know to support this systematic innovation and the iiba core concept model i'm so sorry this is not competence this is core concept model has oh, those uh, six aspects actually <coughs> what is the change that is happening actually what is the context towards this change who are the stakeholders uh, for this particular change what is the solution uh, for the needs uh, uh, you know that this is delivered and what is the value that this solution will deliver right so this is the core concept model of iiba which again supports the innovation and there are knowledge areas which have been uh, you know tweaked a little bit changed somewhat uh, to support this uh, innovation systematic innovation so this is all about analyzing a strategy you know what is the strategy of the organization analyze and come up with a new strategy uh, you know requirement analysis and design definition uh, what will be the design of our solution you know evaluate those solutions and see which one is the best right elicitation and collaboration collaborate with the stakeholders and elicit the requirements along with them uh, requirements life cycle management throughout the life cycle actually manage the change in the requirements and overall planning and monitoring the business analysis effort and there are a lot of supporting tools and techniques you know uh, for strategy for enterprise architecture root cause analysis stakeholder analysis change management so there are a lot of techniques that iiba has they have added few more very relevant techniques that align with cios you know and those techniques are very important for delivering the uh, the uh, the systematic invent, uh, innovation like balanced scorecard okay so new techniques have been added to uh, to to support this uh, changing definition and for this you also require a matured practice of business analysis and i like this uh, four step uh, uh, maturity model which uh, is, which is uh, uh, by uh, Kathleen Haas I really like this model uh, because you need to see what your organization is doing and based on that you need to decide what is the innovation for you right what is that value driven inno innovation for you uh, so your organization could be operational focused you know and your objective is that ensure that the business operations are enhanced you could have be project focused and ensure that the business objectives are met through the projects that are being executed or the focus could be strategy business strategy enterprise so ensure that enterprise is successful and you are coming up with those strategic initiatives that will make the organization successful or you are actually doing innovative business strategy you are competitive focused so you're leveraging the technology and creating those innovative products and services that will make your organization successful right so those are the four stages of maturity and our innovation has relevance in all those four stages right uh, capability of the ba workforce capability of the ba capabilities increase from left to right also the influence needed increase as we move towards our right hand side so let's see actually uh, you know what is the objective of this first one when the business operations uh, is the focus need to ensure that operational processes and systems are improved project is focus means requirements and scopes are managed very well solution meets the business need right and when the strategy enterprise is focused then realizing of the benefits of valuable initiatives 
and investment as per the business case. And the last one, the new strategy to leverage the technology as a platform to create innovative products and services or business model models. So in the first one, there is a lot of scope for incremental innovation like Toyota did. When the project is focused, the breakthrough innovations can come. In the third one, when the strategy is important, disruptive innovations and your last one, when you are, you know, taking technology as a platform to deliver innovative services and, and products and business solutions could be a game changer. And there could be combination of all of this. I'm not say, saying that when your focus is operations, you can you cannot have a disruptive solution. You cannot have a breakthrough innovation. You could, you could. So, and IIBA has a lot of techniques. Uh, so, you know, uh, Velicate has just mapped those tasks and the techniques. So you see what task you are performing. And then using this table, you can see what are the techniques that are available for you to leverage and complete that particular task. Okay. So there is a lot of those things that IIBA supports for systematic innovation management. And when you go in this path, uh, recognize when you need help and secure this help, whatever way you want, actually, because this is business critical, right? So your organization need to really think about this and get the best, uh, you know, process, resource, consulting, training, whatever it means, secure that actually, that's important. So that's what I wanted to uh, present to you. Uh, systematic innovation management is critical for the organizations to survive and become a major player. SIM framework uh, is a systematic framework to deliver the in innovation predictably. IIBA framework help deliver that value driven innovation and BAs play a key role as a catalyst in value driven innovation. Okay, so that's what uh, I had and now I will welcome the questions so you can type those questions and I will answer them as uh, they come and there are already a few questions. So let me take those. Will we get a PPT of uh, this at the end of the meeting? Yeah, you can, you can, no problem, uh, you know. Uh, so is there some way to get the presentation used in the webinar? Yeah, yeah.